So I recently had a website design project that I had to create two forms for. Uh, there's another video kind of the on the other form uh, that was an employee application form. This is like a request a quote form. Um, I'll leave a link up in the down in the description, up in the card to the other one if you want to watch that. But in this video, I'm going to talk about the request a quote form. Um, and there's a couple reasons that I'm kind of talking about this, and I'm going to kind of go over those now. The first, the first disclaimer I want to make though that this isn't going to be like a click by click tutorial. This is more of like a demo and a showcase. Um, because the thing is already built and I'm not going to completely rebuild it. But I do guarantee you that if you just watch through this and you are somewhat familiar with WS Form, or even if it's your first time seeing it, you will understand the power of what this can do uh, and what I've done here. And then if you're interested in it, then you can like, you know, continue or just ask me questions down in the comments and I'd be more than happy to make more specific content. But this is more of just a general overview of what I was able to do here. And like I said, a showcase. So, um, a couple reasons for me making this. One, I really like this. I really love, I love like forms, building anything like this. I think this is really applicable to a lot of people that are building websites for other people because it actually is a real world use case of how you can make a business more efficient, effective, uh, and just streamline a lot of their processes like we're going to see here and I'll explain to you. Um, the second thing is I've been using for w WS Form for like six to 12 months now and I just really love it. Anything I throw at it, any question, any any thing that I can think of or anything that a client can think of, uh, I'm, I'm normally able to do it. I haven't hit any like roadblocks with it. Uh, there's just a ton of things there. And then if on the off chance that I do have any issues, there is a Facebook community and Mark Westgard, the lead developer, is just an absolute wizard. Uh, there's been several times where we've needed people in the community or even myself very recently have needed a feature and I just literally shoot it over to them like in the in the Facebook community and uh, it, it gets done like like magic so can't say enough about it it's just been my experience it's fantastic last reason I'm specifically making this video right now is because for the next few days until June 20 uh, June 20th 2024 there's a 30% off sale I will leave an affiliate link in the description if you want to use that great if you don't that's totally fine too I'm trying to save you guys some money at no additional cost to you with the affiliate link and the 30% thing so do with that what you wish you can also just go here and, and check it out so um, that is that and let's just get into this here so like I said, love this, what it's able to provide for me. Needed a request a quote form, and this is kind of how I went about it. Now on the surface here, it doesn't like it doesn't, you know, it doesn't like shoot fireworks. There's nothing crazy going on here, right? Um, but there's a couple really cool and, and and specific features that I think if you're in a pinch it might be interesting to know at least that you can do it, and then I'll try to kind of show you the high level of how you can do it. It's a request a quote form, okay? You're going to need to build this for yourself or for a client. It's going to have some standard fields. We'll, we'll talk about the form on the front end, and then we'll dive into the back end. First name, last name, all that jazz, preferred contact. Now, what you see here is if you click send a message, you have message and then you have submit. So if you're filling this out, right, if you're an actual prospect, there's not too much else that happens there. Okay, that's relatively straightforward. But what if you click request a quote? Okay, well, that's interesting, right? Now there's a whole different exp experience here. And again, we could change the layout. We could have a separate discussion on if you have multi-step and all that. It can do all that. It's just not in this form currently. But request a quote. So when they click request a quote, this is kind of like a fork in the road, this reason for contacting. And what they needed was uh, if you request a quote, then they need like property address, right? And some of these things are required. Some of these things, there's extra fields and things like that. So there's a bunch of stuff there. And then services particularly. This company provides multiple different types of services, much like many other companies. And depending on what the prospect needs, as you can see here, the form continues to change because the company wants to gather more information about the prospect, the lead, and everything that they have going on here. Because if they if they can get more information up front from the client that is that wants to start a project and is ready, then that's that's fantastic, right? They can just get the ball rolling. Maybe they can already provide a quote just right after getting this initial uh, correspondence, this email here, and it'd be fantastic. Obviously, there's file upload and additional details here too, but this is really where a lot of the magic is specifically for this form. So I want to talk to you about this. These are custom post types, okay? This is this, this is pulled directly from the custom post type thing. I'll show you that in the back end. Those are uh, dynamic. So if I went in right now and I created a new service on this website, it would automatically populate here. You may want that, you may not, but it's a really nice thing to have because then you don't have to like create a service and then come back in here and add it in here. I just love the, the, the possibility of being able to do that. And you can think of many other ways, not just services on a request form, uh, that that would be really useful. Love, love, love that. And then 
um, obviously conditions to show these fields right here. So like if I check, you know, geospatial here for an in, for instance, then there's going to be like, this is, there's just currently one field in here, but there could be like multiple questions, right? Where it's like, oh, do you need more? Do you need X, Y, Z for this? Do you need this? At what time frame do you want? Like whatever it is, use your imagination, adapt it to your own situation. But my point is like, it has the capability to do all that from the conditional logic step standpoint. And then the last thing, and this is like really big, and I'll, I, like I said, I'll go to the back end here in a second. Imagine again from the business case. This is where like, you know, the content, I, I infuse this into all the content I make. I want you to think of this outside the, the parameters of just the technical. Think of why the hell you would be actually doing this. If, if you were actually making this for a business, like I am in this case, if somebody comes in here, a prospect comes in here, right? This is where you can provide a lot more value to your client. If you can request, if you can suggest something like this, a prospect comes in here and they say, oh, we want builder services or X, Y, Z or whatever the hell, right? Well, the lead is signaling that they want that service. And you as the business are going to receive that inquiry about specifically now, you know, they want builder services. Route that directly to the appropriate party. Don't channel it through. I mean, you could you could do several different things, put in a CRM, whatever. But I'm saying ultimately, if you can automate the routing of the lead as well to the the appropriate party, now think of all the steps that you have just think of all the steps that were probably manually done in this business before that you have just improved vastly for them. Okay, just just think about that for a second. Okay, and I'll show you. And now we'll show you. So those are really the the couple key things that. Uh, we were able to do for this client in particular, and I was just really excited with the form stuff. So I had to show you. So I'll just go back in the back end. If you're not familiar with WS Form, this is the this is the UI and everything like that. Um, you know, relatively simplistic, but extremely powerful. So um, there's a couple sections in this form, like we saw contact. There's a little fork here, and this is we'll talk about the fork here for a second. So it's just reason for contacting. It's a simple radio thing. And then based off of that, really where all the magic comes into play up here is in two places. It comes in the conditional logic and then it comes in the actions. So all of your conditional logic stuff is done up here in the conditional logic like area, like button up here. And then you have request a quote, for instance. So we'll just, we'll, I'll just run through these real quick because now that you have an idea of understanding that, you're like, okay, Mark, that sounds cool, but how do I actually, how would I actually do some of that? Well, the way that I've done it here is request a quote. You can name your condition, whatever you want, but I'm saying if it's request a quote, here's what I want you to do. If they have request a, qu request a quote checked in that reason for contacting field, then what I want to do is I want to set the visibility of services to visible. So I'm set, so all those things that we that we did in here, I'll, I'll try to go back and forth so you can kind of see because it's a, it's a little difficult to see there. So if I have request a quote checked, then what that's doing is that is that is setting this section here, this services section, to visible. It's select. It's it's um. It is, and honestly, it would probably be better if these were in this order. So it's setting the property location section to visible. It's setting the services section to, to visible, and it's setting the additional details section to visible. So, and you can kind of see here, obviously, with the uh, with the the highlighting here, what what it's doing. So that is if. That's if you you click request a quote. So again, conditional logic. Again, maybe if you're familiar with it, it's not like that's not that crazy of a concept. But the amount of stuff that you can do with WS Form specifically, and like the, the conditions that you can actually set, is quite impressive. Um, in this case, that one was relatively straightforward. So if we go back over here, send a message is, is a little easier, right? So send a message. If you have send a message uh, checked, then you then you just set the um, then set the visibility to send a message. Uh, this section down here. There's a lot of sections, obviously, in this form. It starts to get kind of crazy. Um, just, just the one piece that is just the message, right? Like we saw here. Again, I'm just kind of showing you the back end. Boom. And then this is another, think of this as another section where you can also like even stupid little tiny things that you never think of. Like this section technically has a, a label to it, right? This, this message here, if you can think about this box, right? That section is this right here, this send a message. You can just not show that label. Like there's a quick little toggle to do that. You don't have to do any crazy CSS stuff. It's just already in there. Like Mark Westgard has just thought of so many things. It's crazy. So, and then the other thing too, and this is where you might get tripped up is because all of the conditional logic is done within this one panel. So for instance, that would be like, in my mind, like a conditional thing that's talking about the way in which you are displaying the information, right? And you might not think that conditional logic for actions would be in there, but it is. And it, it actually works very well because you might, there might be a time where like, especially in this case, it's like, 
I want to be able to intermingle the conditions for the, the fields and for the actions. So in this case, right, if we check send a message, here's what I want to do. What I was talking about earlier, the routing of this form. If I check send a message, if somebody checks send a message, I don't want to send that to a specific department. I don't want to do that. I want to send that to our main, like, you know, catch all email or whatever. So if it's selected, then we're going to use the action, which we'll talk about in a second, of send to like the info inbox, right? So that's what we're going to run when the form is submitted. If not, then we're not going to run that. Or, I mean, again, you, you make up your own conditions. But my point is, what I'm doing there is I'm only sending. I'm, I'm literally using a condition to say, if something's checked, then send an email when the form is submitted to a specific inbox. And that's how I'm going to be able to do those other ones, those more um, you know, uh, unique ones like we were talking about. Okay, so then the rest of these are all kind of the same same concept is like for this, again, this builder services type uh, situation here. Then what services do you need? If what services do you need has, if any of the checked values, if the checked values equals builder services, and I'll tell you why we have to do it that way. You could do it a different way if like row equaled a specific thing and it would know that like you'd have it. But the reason is we didn't talk about this yet. I mean, I mentioned it, but we didn't show in the back end. Those services are dynamically generated. So you could just say if it, if it equals builder services, then set visibility of this builder services section down here to visible, or if not, set it to hidden. That's how all of them work. It's relatively straightforward. It's just It's just that. Let's make this make a little more sense for you and come into the services section and show you how we got those. So again, this warrants a larger tutorial. If you want it, you let me know, I will make it. But you have an idea here, right? You wanna create something like this, where you say just this section right here, right here, where there's what services do you need, right? And you wanna create something like this, whether it's services or I don't know, people or whatever. And you wanna generate these via some sort of dynamic data not just put them in there and then have to manually edit them. It's no problem. So you go to you go to check boxes over here in this case. So you're editing your field and you say data source. Look at all these data sources, by the way. There's presets, which I'm not gonna click on because I don't wanna mess any of this up, but presets is like US countries, like all sorts of stuff that you would, that like states, like all sorts of stuff that you would have to like manually enter and, and deal with. It's just, it's all, oops, I hit my microphone. It's all in there for you. Posts, post statuses, terms, users. I mean, there's a lot of stuff, okay? But you go posts. And then you, for post type, you're able to just select the post that you want. In this case, it's service. And then you can even filter by post type term, like whatever you kind of want here, okay? And then very simply with two clicks basically there, you're able to, it dynamically generates a list that you're able to see there and bada bang, bada boom, you have all of these. And then again, I want to reiterate, if I went in right now and, they, and this client came to me and said, hey, we added a new service. We need to add it. We need to add a service page and we need to do all this other stuff. Obviously, some of that you have to you have to do. You have to add the service as a, as a new post um, and then you'd have to build out the page or whatever. But in this case, you don't need to, you're going to forget, like you would 100% forget to come into this form and add that as a new entry. You don't have to. It's just automatically going to go in there. So that's another big thing. Um, so that's how those were generated and that's how we did the, the dynamic conditioning there, conditional logic to make all that happen. All right, so the last thing here is kind of really tying it all together. If we talk about actions, saving to submission, showing a message, that's pretty standard, email to a lead, you know, stuff like that. Email, and then, and this is where we get to like the extra actions. Think of actions again as just your, the things that you're doing after the submit, right? Or when the form is saved or what have you. Those actions can be used again back in the conditional logic. So we have an email to info at whatever. That's our standard catch-all thing, right? And we utilize that wherever we need to, uh, however we need to in the uh, in these pieces here in this conditional logic. But then, and this is actually still kind of in development, but the concept is already still there. So what we're, what we're going to have is like six other or a few other like whatever um, emails here email actions, so email to builder services. And I'm actually thinking of a way to make this even better if we can just narrow it down to one. But at the time being, at the very minimum viable product, you can say in here, email to builder services, email to service two, service three, service whatever. And then these specific emails could be as specific as you want for those things. Like you could get really crazy with however you want to do this. You could implement dynamic data. You could say, I'm not going to go through all the whole action items here because that's not really the point of this one. But you can do whatever you want here. And then the point is, then you come back over to conditional logic, okay? And then in the one where you said, hey, builder services, let's let's put it in there or whatever, let's let's 
when it's when somebody selects builder services, show them the, the questions and everything like that. Then what you do is you add one more condition, okay? And you say if if this is selected, then select and you come down here and you say action email to builder services and you say run when the form is submitted. And then what this does right here, what that single action did, assuming you set up, you know, the actual the, or what that single um, condition did, assuming you set up that action, is this sends an email, and it's only going to send the email to the builder service people when there was an inquiry for builder services. So again, I know I'm using like weird like services here. Again, it was just the client service. Okay, but but what I'm saying is like, if you can understand these the the the, the power of of that type of system. I know I'm using a specific example here, but if you can understand the power of that, then you can adapt this to anything, whatever you want, whether it's a request a quote form or an employee application or, you know, um, uh, a login or, a, you know, like a any sort of like upload or like a video form or like anything like that. I mean, just the amount of stuff that you could do is endless. So I just really love the power of this. I hope this helped you a little bit understand like at least the power of the dynamic conditioning or the conditional logic really conditional actions as well. And really, and, and a lot of dynamic stuff going on here. The d dynamic insertion of those uh, custom post types literally directly into the, um, uh, the, the checkboxes there. I don't know, just a lot of really cool things here. I'm just like really, just extremely bullish on WS Forum. I love it. Um, like I said, there's that 30% off right now. If you use the link down below, it'll take you right there and you can uh, use the code. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I'm just trying to share with you guys the things that I'm literally using and I and have helped me so much and have saved my butt in a ton of projects. So uh, that's all I got. If you guys have any questions specifically about what we're doing here with WS Form or anything specific about like, Mark, can you show how to do like this? If you have like literally a, a specific question that you need to do, let me know in the comments down below. I'll do my best to make a follow-up video on it, explain how to do it and everything like that. Also, I'll leave a link to that other video if you didn't watch it, the employee application one, because it's similar, but there's a couple other motifs and like techniques in there, specifically like uh, query variables up in the URL bar and, and passing those in and out of the forms itself. Just really powerful, guys. I'm not saying it's like the absolute end-all be-all of best forms. It's just the one that I absolutely love right now. It's doing very well for me. Um, happy to hear you guys' thoughts, uh, and that's all I got for you. Thank you so much, and I will talk to you in the next one.